All right, so I'll go in here with a little pry bar. We'll just press against the that little gasket. Ow, I hit my finger. Oh, really? That hurt. Hello, everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here. I know I am super glad to be here. This thing is a 2016 Toyota Highlander. I believe it's all wheel drive. It has approximately 97,783 miles on the odometer. It was here once upon a time before, starting the engine, and uh, I had recommend a valve, recommended words, a valve cover gasket replacement and some spark plugs. And it has returned for, uh, for service. So we're gonna go ahead and swing this thing into the shop get it backed into my corner rack and we're gonna get started. Now, uh, my guy tells me that uh, he heard some brake noise, I think out of the rears, and uh, he wants to do a little bit of maintenance stuff on it also. The primary operation here is gonna be uh, the valve covers and the spark plugs on this engine. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear whether or not we're gonna change uh, some of the coils. Uh, reason being is this V6 engine has like an intake manifold that goes over top the rear bank of cylinders. And in order to get to those coils and spark plugs, you have to pull that intake manifold off. So uh, my protocol is, and uh, many people are in agreement with me, since you're going through all the labor to pull that apart, and those coils tend to be a high failure rate item past 100K, we, uh, we may go ahead and drop in the three new coils that are hard to get on the back bank of cylinders. But we'll see. The uh, coils are not, uh, not particularly cheap for this car. So uh, it may put us at a price point where it's not advantageous for us to do that at this time, but uh, we're gonna find out. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very interesting engine repair video. Oh yeah, real quick side note, uh, on a personal level, the pollen count right now is absolutely murdering me. So uh, I'm a little nasally in my nasal congestion areas and uh, it has affected my speech uh, somewhat. And, uh, and I have a nasty headache. I can't like it, is what it is. But it'll be over soon, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna park this guy right about here. I think that looks good. We can go ahead and set the rack. Let's get started. Parking is the auto, powering down. All right, Toyota, let's see what we've got under our bonnet here. Let's see what we're working with. Looks like we have our V6 engine. It's a 2GR FE. That's the 3.5 liter. Really good motor. Here, let's uh, shed some light bar on the subject here. Powering on, surface of the sun mode engaged. First things first, let's get our cover out of here. Pop that guy off, come here cover. And uh, there's our 3.5 liter. Now, as I was saying earlier in the cabin, we've got three ignition coils right here. And then the other three, those are on the rear cylinder head and they are covered up by this intake manifold. So because of that, and since this takes a little bit of labor to replace, it would be advantageous of us to go ahead and just swap those coils out uh, right about meow. Okie doke, so getting started, we need to pull this upper radiator cover off. We're gonna pull this uh, intake snorkel off, air box lid, disconnect the connectors, remove the EVAP lines, and uh, once this stuff is disconnected from the intake, we'll go ahead and unbolt this intake manifold. That's gonna give us some access to uh, what's going on behind it. Then we can disconnect and unbolt the valve covers, pull those guys off, change the gaskets, change the spark plugs, drop in some new coils, and then go from there. So fun fact, these Toyota clips are particularly interesting. You have to push the center down on them and then the clip may be extracted, see that? Then when we go to reinstall them, we have to reset the clip, push it back down, then we can reinsert it and then push the center part back down. Uh, I don't know why they chose that particular design, Aesthetically, it's fantastic, but uh, many people try to pry these apart from the top and they break them. So if you don't know, now you know, you know? Let's see, that one can, that's gotta go, come here. Yep, all the plastics has to be removed. There we go, okay, first piece of plastic has been removed. Let's move on to our intake snorkel right in front of us next. We'll get this thing unbolted to 10 mils. Uh, a couple little hoses, and I think there's a hose clamp down there somewhere. Okay, let's pull these guys out. Unpickage. There we go. Disconnect this guy, set that aside. Let us begin disconnecting some of these components. Uh-oh, that's stuck. I don't want to break the snipple off, that would be bad. Let's pull our air box lid out. 
PCV hoses, goodbye, don't need you. EVAP hose, goodbye. Hose clamp, disconnected. And we pull our, uh, uh oh, got a wire back there. No worries, we'll just pop this clip out of here. Become disconnected, please, thank you. There we are. Okay, just to clear some space, let's pull this air box out. Come out, air box. Those are some kind of crusty feeling threads. A little bit of rust on them. There's our filter unit, and there might be another bolt back there. One right here, I see it. We see you, yet I couldn't reach it. Be it. Okay, is there another one? Another? Maybe? No, no, just a rubber grommet. There we go. Okay, let's disconnect our throttle body connector here, because I'm gonna have to pull the throttle body off so I can reach behind it and uh, disconnect some brackets that are back there. So this throttle body, I think it's got four fasteners in it. Pull these guys out. There's also engine coolant running through this throttle body. And uh, rather than disconnecting the coolant lines, I'll just disconnect the entire throttle body. Set that aside. There's our gasket, set that aside. One more evap hose. We can just tuck all this stuff down in this uh, this location here and get it out of the way, like so. We have right here one more PCV hose. That's positive crankcase ventilation. Slide that thing off, and I can start reaching back and trying to locate those brackets. There's a connector. Let's lose this thing. Come on, connector. No, oh, got it. Okay, I feel one bracket, and I don't think the bolt is in it. Hmm, not sure. Let me pull these upper bolts off first, and we'll try to wiggle this thing around. We'll see where the uh, where the fasteners are located. We've got two 10 mils, and the rest of them look like uh, Torx or hex, hex bits. I think a T30 will fit nicely. Nope, too tight. Too tight for my little impact gun. This is fine, I have a ratchet. We'll break it loose with the ratchet. Uh, you gonna cut off? Yeah. Kinda corroded. It made me nervous, I just had a Subaru flashback. It's not okay. That one. There we go. Come out. One more. There we go. Set those aside. Okay. Now, where is that bracket? I feel one here, I think. And there's one. Oh, I got the other one. There it is. Okay. Since you guys aren't going to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm just going to reach around this thing, pull this bracket apart. Okay, dokes. I've got one of them here. And survey says there's one more over on that side over yonder. Ooh, come on. That's the last one. There's only two bracket bolts on the back of this, I think. That's the last one coming out right here. That's, or the second one, rather. Got it. Now, I should be able to sneak this intake out. Come on out. There we go. Okay, we've got our uh, vacuum line brake booster hose right here. Let's pull that thing off the off the booster on the firewall. Now we can set this guy aside. So there appears to be another bracket right here hanging out. So let's pull these bolts out. Can I reach that back one? Sure can. Good. Let's see, there's another one right here. Looks like a 10 mil. Get this guy to come out. Nice. There we go. 
you know, I had better smarten up here and block off these intake passages just in case. Stick some blue towels in there. Cover those guys up. That'll prevent uh, destructive components from entering the engine. More importantly, it'll prevent them from going in when I don't know about it. I mean, if it goes in there, that's one thing. But if it goes in and I don't know about it, that's a whole nother type of problem that I don't want to have. So we're not going to do that. Anyway, let's go ahead, get this wiring harness disconnected from all of its brackets and whatnot. And then uh, we'll pull the coils out and then pull the uh, valve cover off. That is the plan. Oh, come on now, there we go. Another. Can't push that clip, it's hard to get to. Please come off. There we go. And there's another one back there for, uh, looks like a BBT solenoid. That one's being stubborn. Come on, clip. Become unclipped. Can't force it, you'll break it. There we go. And then we've got the three coils. Let's get those guys disconnected. I'm pushing the clip with one hand and then using the little pry tool to just push the clip off of the coil. We're not prying it with uh, any large amount of force because again, that will break things and we don't want to break things. We're in business for uh, fixing things. Breaking them would be the antithesis of uh, what's going on here. And that is the vocab word of the day, antithesis. There we go. That one's disconnected. We'll just kind of shove that harness down and out of the way. You just stay back there. There we go. All right. All right, looking a little farther back, we have a bracket here, which is kind of not in the way, but it kind of is. So I'm gonna pull that thing off. And then there's another one right behind it. That one actually is in the way. Here, let's get this one out of here. And then we'll get the big one there. That's the one that was attached to the intake manifold. This guy, right? Right back here. Pull that off and I'll keep the bolt with it. That way it does not get lost. Now we've got three coil bolts. Let's get rid of these. Below the ignition coils, we will find our spark plugs, but uh, I'm not gonna pull those until, until later. There's one coil. Come out. Come all the way out, there we go. Number two, and uh, numero tres, right there. Okay, so we're almost in a position where we need to, uh, or we can take the perimeter bolts apart to remove the valve cover. However, there's this oil line right here with a banjo bolt on it. I need to disconnect that thing next. Here, we'll just go in there with a wrench. I believe that's a 17, and it is. Crack that thing loose. That's an oil supply line for the uh, VVT solenoids, I think. I think. Now, there's a crush washer on the other side of this banjo bolt. And I need to make sure I don't drop that and lose it. So I'm keeping my finger on there so it can't go anywhere. Pull the bolt out, set that aside. And what's in the middle of that? There's something in there. I see it. Maybe like a screen or something like that. There's one of the washers. Set that aside. Let's pluck that other washer out so it cannot get lost. Come here, other washer. There it is. And whatever's in the middle of that, I think it was a screen. Yeah, it went back and it's in here right now. I'll get that later. Okay. All right, let's get after all these 10 millimeter uh, perimeter bolts next. We'll get this thing unbolted. 
and uh, just make sure nothing else is hanging us up and then we can remove this unit. There we go. That one I can't reach because there's a oil line in the way, but I can flex it. Oil flex complete. Come here, little 10. There we go. And some more of them in the back. I can't reach those yet. We'll get this one over here. I'm breaking protocol and doing the hardest to reach ones first. Shouldn't be doing that. Here, this uh, PCV line is getting kind of awkward, so I'm gonna pull this thing off of here as well. It's in my way a lot. Okay, so I can't really see what's going on back here. There's a flashlight. Can't see what's going on back here much, so I'm just gonna operate by feel, and uh, we'll see how well this works out. Come off. That's tight. Another. Let's see here. There's one. I feel one over here in the corner. Let's get that one off. Very good. Wonderful. Another one here on the side. I can't see it, but I can feel it. There it is. You can't see it. And you guys can't feel it. Your only hope to understand what I'm doing is through my calm and soothing narrations. Ah. Where's that other one at? There's a couple more here. I know there is. Here's a ground wire. Let's disconnect that. I'm gonna put that bolt back in its hole so I know exactly where that one went. And then right behind it, there's another 10 for the valve cover. Let me pull that one off. Oh, I lost it. I had it. I found it. I lost it. I cannot reach any longer. It's a deal. Maybe, maybe I don't feel it. Well, here, I feel this one. I'll just move to one that I can feel. That one's out. Now, where's that one? Did I already get it? Is it not a bolt? Hmm. I don't understand. Maybe it's a different size. Okay. Well, hey, here's one. There's one right there. I'll get that one. This one is for a bracket for the wiring harness. We pull that one off. There's got to be another. Yeah, that one's a 12. Okay. I see what we're doing here. We have different size bolts on the same valve cover. Put that one on there. I'm gonna click you. That's weird. Maybe that's the deal with the one in the back. It's a 12 mil, not a not a 10. Survey says correct. Okay. I think that might be the last of them. Let's get under here with a, a prying device and see if this is gonna crack loose or not. Come disconnected now. It's not working. Ooh, that's on there, good too. I okay, see it flex. It does not want to release. All right, so I'm in here kind of feeling around and I found what's hanging me up. There's a bolt right here in the center of this valve cover that's uh, holding the unit down. Let's get that one out next. There you are. And what I don't know is if there's any others. But let's go back to giving it some pry action here. If that's it, it'll come free, and it did. See that? I knew something was hanging on to it. 
And what we don't know is if there's another one somewhere. It feels like there might be. Ah, oh, my glove is stuck. Who knew? I think there's one more. It feels like there's one more in this back corner somewhere. But I, I really don't feel one back there. I don't know. Let's keep wiggling it. No. There should be something there. There's got to be. It's, it's right in that corner. I don't get it. I don't know. That's weird because there's... There's too much play in it for it to be a bolt. Oh, there we go. Oh, I see, there's a dowel pin. That's what it is. There was a dowel in there. That's what uh, had us nice and hung up like a little dowel pin to align everything. Come here, valve cover. Come out. Wow, this thing's squeaky clean. This is a very squeaky clean motor, look at that. Very nice. Good job on the oil changes. Now I've introduced some dust into this engine from all the dirt that was here. Let me wipe that down. It's fine. Not hurting anything. It all gets rinsed out. Bottom of the crankcase, drained out. And anything else ends up in the filter. Get rid of that sealant. Get rid of that sealant wipe this down get rid of all the dirt that was built up at the gasket surface get rid of you wipe that down a little bit more out back right here there nice and squeaky clean we like it like that all righty so normally what i would do is uh go ahead and re-gasket uh that other uh, valve cover gasket and i would just uh reassemble that at this point However, my parts are not here yet for, uh, for that side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on with this assembly. We're gonna pull this front gasket off. Again, a uh, bunch of little connectors and clips and uh, things of that nature. This one's gonna be much, much easier to disassemble than, uh, than the other side because I can reach everything and I can see everything. Come on. And I don't have to uh, give this engine a bear hug just to take things apart. Well, come off, please, switching hands. Oh, it's, I can't do that with one hand. I seem to have reached some type of limitation regarding my one-handed abilities. Don't break. Push, push, wiggle. There we go. That was a tough one. They get dirt inside of them, and then they uh, they don't want to come apart. Let's pull that clip up just a wee bit. Don't break, Toyota clip. These are notorious for snapping off when you try to uh, disconnect the Toyota coils. It's just a thing that they do. I'll come back to that one later. Let's get that one off of there. Come on, there we go. One more right here. Let's try this again with some uh, precision instruments. Pull that tab up. There we go. And of course, this uh, this last one right down here, I'm gonna pull the tab back. There we go, good, 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 good. Nothing broke. I don't like breaking Toyota coil clips. It's one of those uh, like regenerator things. You broke it, you buy it. And I'm like, it's not my fault. That's what they do, they break. Anyway, babbling on, let's get the uh, injectors disconnected and then Figure out what else is holding this thing up here. One more, oh, right down there. You can't see what I'm doing. We've got this connector. Come off. Come on, seriously? Why won't you slide off? I'll break you. I'll break you like you're an ignition coil bolt connector. There we go. Got her. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to move this entirely because it's attached down there to the alternator and there's another connector all the way, way down at the compressor. I don't feel like taking that off. Uh, plus, I can't really take it off over here on the right. So what we're going to do is just kind of work around this thing. I need to get uh, the air gun out. I want to blow some of this dust off. 
That way I don't introduce some dust on the backside like what I already did. And then uh, we'll go ahead and pull all these bolts out of this thing and remove this cover. And couldn't hurt the engine cover this back, uh, back cylinder as well. A lot of folks think that if stuff gets in there, it instantly ruins the engine. And that's not the case. See, everything you see that's uh, covered in oil, that's all the dirty side of the engine. Meaning all that dirt and debris and dust and sand and whatever else, that stuff ends up getting washed down into the crankcase, okay? Now, as it's washing down, it passes over zero critical components. It just it runs down. The clean side of the engine, of the oil system on the engine, is actually what is happening after the filter. See, oil is picked up from the sump, from the, uh, the pump, and it's pumped into directly into the filter. As it leaves the filter, that's when it passes into the block and it gets sent off to the, uh, the main bearing. After that, it runs up top to the cylinder heads, gets sent to the camshafts, uh, the BVT, and uh, any other components. So no matter what, all of those critical specified components inside the engine are always receiving clean oil. Unless the filter's clogged and then it starts bypassing or something, and then we, uh, that's a different story. But for the most part, they're always, everything is always gonna have clean oil. So the reality is, is any kind of contaminants that go into an engine, for example, I could, I could dump some dirt right here into this oil fill cap, and as soon as that engine starts, that oil is gonna wash that dirt straight down into the, the pan, and it's gonna get picked up and pumped straight into the filter. So there's actually very, very minimal risk of damaging anything by having some dirt enter the engine. Now, if you leave it there and never change your oil, that's gonna be a different conversation, but small minuscule particles of debris are not gonna cause critical engine failure. It's just, it's not gonna happen. If that were the case, there'd be blown up engines everywhere at every single quick lube shop across the country. Uh, come off, banjo bolt. Oh, there we go. Get this thing out of here. We don't need you. Well, I mean, we do need it, but not right now. Here comes our banjo fitting for this oil supply line. There's that filter. Yes, this thing is still in the, uh, the other valve cover, but that's the filter going to the BBT solenoids. I'm going to make sure to clean those out though. Where, oh where, it's actually more like a screen not so much a filter. Let's get this, uh, this washer out of here. I have replacements, but that doesn't mean I'm going to lose these. Okay, now all we have left are these perimeter bolts, and then I can pop this, uh, this cover off of here. Show. Let's change our angle of our camera dangle here a little bit. Start pulling these guys out. place to put my fasteners here. There we go. Small. That one's the 12. There it is. Come here, 12 millimeter. Seriously? Okay. Oh. I guess I have to break that one loose manually as well. Unclick. Or not. Okay. Put some uh, some weight behind it here. There it goes. Got it. That's tight. That was uh, super tight. Like a pack of tigers tight. Like a gaggle of tigers. There we go. A gaggle. When was the last time you heard somebody say that? There's another one. Is that one going to come off? Yes, it is. Beautiful. Okay, back to our 10s. I think those are the only two 12s. Next. Another off to the right. There we go. Can you guys see? You can still see, kind of. Yep. There's that one, another one up here. And uno mas, right there. Beautiful. Now, I know there's a dowel pin in this somewhere. I think it's probably on this side. So 
let's get behind there with some pry action and start to work this cover up. Did I just hear thunder? Hey, Caster Troy! Ah. Woo! Was that thunder? It sounded like That's cool. Not yep, there's the dial pin right there. I see it. Here, let's apply some foaming lubricant to that dial pin right there. <laughs> Maybe it'll come free. Maybe it won't. Who knows? Find out in a minute. Let me get behind this cover somewhere else and we'll pry up on it some more. All the little pry flanges are hard to reach. Did I get my center bolt? Yes, I did. Okay, yeah, we'll just get under this thing wherever we can and just kind of work it upwards. Every time we move it, it's wiggling that dowel pin over there. Oh man, I forgot one. Look at that. Look at that. That's a that's a destructive uh, oversight right there. I could have gotten violent with my pry bar. Seriously? Why? Why must you fight me? Why? Let's see. 7,000 foot pounds of torque here. Let's see what we got. Unclick you. Oh, come on. Nope. Need bigger tools. That one's not, uh, not gonna work. So what we need is a, a bigger impact gun. Or not. Hmm, Let's turn it up to three. There we go. Bigger anvil. Bigger impacts. More reverse torquages. Okay, now it's moving a little bit better. See that? This is good. Just keep working that, working it, working it. I think I just dropped a flashlight somewhere. More wiggle action. Okay, let's move over. I want to try to get underneath that little dowel pin and get this thing uh, removed here. Come out, pin. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Please come out. There it goes. Got her. The wiggles are highly effective. Extremely effective. Excessively effective. Well, I don't know about excessively. Get this thing out of here. Come out. There. Let go, gasket. Oh no, the gasket's hung up. Half of it stayed on the cover, half of it stayed on the cylinder head. All right, that's two covers removed with two gaskets removed. Let's pull the spark plugs out next. Okie doke, spark plug socket coming in with an extension. It's on the electric ratchet. Wow, let's crack these guys loose and back them out. Kind of rough. They've never been out. That's why. What we got here? Looks like we've got some Denso iridiums. A little bit of wear on the end. Not horrible. About right for 90 something thousand, 100,000. Good. Pull this next one out. Similar condition. Plug number three. There we go. And again, very similar condition. So, let's compare with uh, one of my new plugs here. Pulled out the Denzos. I have ordered NGKs. Also, laser iridiums. Similar in construction. Size, shape, all that good stuff. Even the same color. These are good. Okie dokes. Let's go ahead. Let's get these spark plugs down in their home here. We'll get these things tightened down and apply some torquage. We'll go ahead and get the rear ones next because I'm still waiting on uh, valve covers. Let's crush the crush washer. 
Clickage. There we go. One down. Five to go. There's numero dos. We'll get her started. Send it. Not a full send. It's like a slight send. If you full send it, when it bottoms out, it can actually uh, torque the uh, fastener and break, or torque the socket rather, and it can break the spark plug, which would not be okay. Especially on the cylinders in the rear. We don't want to break that. So then I got to do it again. And I don't want to. That one's in. Trigger control. Click right there. All right, three down, three to go. Let's move out back and get the remaining three. Whoa, I dropped my socket. No worries. Okay, I've used a, uh, a shorter extension on this rear side because, well, there's no space for the longer extension. So I had to shorten it up to a six inch. Let's get these last three out of here. Uh-oh, socket stayed. There we go. Similar condition as the others. Set that thing aside. Come on out. Socket stayed. This is that crappy extension that doesn't lock very well. It's a Mac tool and it's been around for a long time. Kind of worn out. Last one, come out please. Very nice, last one, good to go. Three new ones are prepped. Slide those down into their homes here. And a reverse procedure. Two left. All right. Let's get that one down in there. Crushing the crush washer, the seal, kickage. There we go. Ooh. Last ones. These rear plugs are hard on the back. I don't like them. A little bit more. Okay, got it. Give me back my socket. Thank you. Very good. All right. Okay, well, I'm uh, kind of in limbo until I get that valve cover gasket. Let me go check on that. I'll be right back. Don't worry about it. Fee full foam. I detect a pile of parts. And none of that rhymed. These appear to be my valve cover gaskets. Very good. We've got spark plug tube seals, perimeter gaskets. We have some little O-rings that I believe seal off the passages for the VBT solenoids. There's four of them, two on this head, two on that one. So I'll make sure to replace those. We've got replacement crush washer, washers for the oil supply lines. So uh, let's go ahead and get these things set up with the new gaskets and uh, get the uh, covers reinstalled. We will uh, we'll do the hard one first, the rearmost one. Here, let's get this computerizer out of the way. That's a crankshaft seal, let's get that out of the way. We don't need that. Let's see, these are my intake gasket that came with the plugs. We'll get those later. 
good. So here, let's get rid of this. Don't need that gasket. Now I need to uh, bend these little tabs out right here and pop these uh, spark plug tube seal gaskets out. Those have got to be replaced. These things get become, or become very brittle over time and they'll leak oil down into the spark plug tubes and cause misfires. And that would be bad. These appear to be easier than the Nissans. The Nissan little tabs are, uh, they're plastic and they break off. These ones are metal and they bend. I like these. Bend them back. I don't even know why these are here because the, the tube seals are pressed fit into that little bore right there. So it seems kind of a, a waste to have these tabs here. But whatever, I'm not an engineer. Those are critical. Do not forget them. So now, turn this thing over, go in here with a pry driver and just tap out these uh, these seals right here and then we can clip it and then drive the new ones in. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here with a little pry driver, get it set up on that, uh, that rubber seal, and just give it a couple taps, knock the thing out. It's probably gonna come apart, maybe a little. Yeah, it's coming apart some, no worries. Just tap it on out. Some of them are easier than others. This one's uh, particularly easy. Again, the Nissan ones, you gotta bash them. These ones came out with uh, extreme relative ease. Good. Now, we'll unbox the new ones, get those things set up in the holes, perimeter gasket this thing, apply a little bit of RTV sealant, and uh, get it all back together. There's one. Number two. It's important that these are faced the proper way. If they're upside down or inverted, you won't be able to get that to spread past the spark plug tube seals. And uh, that can be frustrating. These are looser than I thought. They just kind of press down in there. That's not what I expected. Okay, that works though. I guess these fit somewhat loose. Where's my pliers? There they are. We'll put our little tabs back. Bend it. Bend it some more. Or no, no, we're not bending it, we're flexing it. That's what we're doing here, we're flexing. With a hammer. Okay, spark plug tube seals are installed. Let's get the gasket on next. Then we'll go over to the head, get the O-ring gaskets on, and then get this thing uh, put into position. Now, let's see, according to the gasket, we've got a 90 degree bend here. That's a relief for one of the bolts. Let's find a 90. There, there's one. There's a 90, but that's not it because that relief does not fit. So let's find our next 90. There we go. This is how it fits. It's kind of loose. I don't like that. If they're too loose, when you invert this thing, the gasket can fall out. And if you don't notice, it'll leak everywhere, and that would also be bad. That's just to help to seat the thing just a little bit better. And voila, we're good to go here. So elsewhere in the hardware kit, we've got these uh, four figure eight looking gaskets. These are the ones that are going to replace these gaskets, which we found right here stuck to the valve cover. However, we don't place these on the valve cover because this is a flat surface. We have to place those in a recess that's back in the head. So let's take two of these with us. We'll run over to the cylinder head, get these guys in position. Those are gonna go right here, see that? Right there, and right there. And those seal the passages between the VVT solenoids on the valve cover 
and the actual actuators right here and right here that are on the camshaft. Without those there, oil pressure won't make it to those camshaft actuators and you'll have all kinds of valve train problems. And that would be bad. So this is prepped, ready to go. The, the block is almost prepped. The head is almost prepped. I need to get some sealant for this area right here. And one more little dab on another area right back there where you can't see. The reason we need some sealant is because this is one metal piece and this is one metal piece and there's a hairline crack in between. And we just throw a dab of silicone down. That way the oil can't wick along that crack and then leak outside of the engine. All right, so I've got a mirror and a little bit of a RTV sealant. That's a room temperature vulcanizing. Oh, I dropped a bunch of it. Hang on, gotta redo that. I had a nice little, uh, Nice little glob on there for an easy transition. There we go. Let me get in the back here and uh, I will place that sealant on a little gap right there. That's what we're looking for. And then a little bit more right here. One more little dab. That's not enough. I want more. There we go. Right there. We don't need to go crazy with it, but that should be fine. Okay, the sealant is in place. Valve cover is coming in. I don't need any sealant on that side of the head, so we are good to get this thing set into position here. We need to mine that uh, that oil hose over here for the VVT system. And what else am I getting hung up on? Wiring harness. It's always a wiring harness in Toyota land. They're everywhere. They're on everything. Mm, spark plug tubes. Let's line up now. Here we go. Just like that. I'll get this center bolt started first. That'll draw the thing down. There we go. I also need to mine those dowel pins and make sure that those pins actually slip into place. If not, it'll just flex the cover and then cause a massive leak. Uh, this also would not be okay. I don't want massive leaks. We're here to prevent leaks. Okay, let me go over here and check the dowel. Make sure that that's in good shape. And the survey says it is not. The dowel pin is not in position. So I need to back this bolt off a bunch. Flex it some. Wiggle it some. Tighten it some. And then hit it with a hammer some. No, seriously, I'm not kidding. I'm gonna tap that dowel in. See that? A little bit of tappy tap tap action. All right, I did steal that one. I did steal that, that catchphrase, I did. You got me. But it was so fitting, wasn't it? Tappity tap tap. Okay, I'm gonna speed this up and enter super high speed lightning fast motion while I get the rest of these fasteners installed and torqued down. Come out. All right, so we have all the perimeter bolts fastened down. Let me reach in here and get a hold of that ground cable. There's a ground, uh, a ground lug right here, see that? And that bolted on to the top of this cover. So I'm gonna get that thing on so I don't forget. Let's get that guy in place. Where's my 10? In my hand. There we go. Tighten down that ground wire. They're so often overlooked, those ground wires. Click. And they cause so many problems if they're not on. Okay, let us next connect the oil supply line to the valve cover. We've got some new crush washers here for the banjo. There's the one for the outside. 
There's our screen that goes into the banjo. And we're gonna slip that through the fitting, drop the second crush washer into place without actually dropping it anywhere. And then we can feed this into the valve cover here. There we go. Slide that in, get it threaded, and we'll tighten this guy down. Okay, that guy's finger tight. Need a 17 mil. Let's put some torque on that thing, crush the crush washers. That's a tight squeeze right there. Different tool. Here, I'll use the offset ratcheting spline drive. See how it's got that little bit of an offset? That's gonna help me clear the, uh, the line right here. And then I can properly apply torque. Okay, crush washers are crushing. So far, so good. And click. There we go. Okie dokes. Next up on the to-do list is going to be to get this harness uh, roughed in its position. And I say rough because I still don't have my uh, replacement coils. Uh, I've learned that those are not going to arrive today. So we're going to do what we can. Uh, that's a coil connector. That's one. We'll do what we can for now. And then when those coils show up, we can uh, we can slap those guys in. So. We'll get everything else connected and plugged in as it should be. And uh, we'll just hold off on uh, on the coils until they arrive. Works for me. Okay, next up, let's get the fuel injector connectors reconnected. I have a bad habit of forgetting those until the last minute. It's never okay. Let's see this one. That should go there. Why do I have a nut on that? What have I what have I done wrong here? I know that that goes there. Oh, I know what, I know how this works. Hang on. I confused myself. I forgot a bracket. So let's pull this thing back off that stud. Come all the way off, please. Oh, one way connector. Woo, I almost stabbed my thingy. Not okay. Come off, you thing. Leverage. It's not working. None of it's working. I can't get the thing to come off. There. This goes on here. That's that's what we do here. That goes there, like so. Then the nut goes on. Then the thing goes on over the stud. That's what I did incorrectly. Let's get that guy threaded in. Looking for one more fastener back here. Where is it? Is it a 10 or is it a, a 12? That's a 12. Yeah, that one goes there. There we go. So we got two 12s and a 10 left. Let's get our 10 right now. 10 click. Now I can put that thing back on. That's where that goes. Just like that. Get the two 12s. Get that one tight, and then this one right here. Beautiful. Okay, so with the exception of the coils, uh, there's not much I can do back here on this back valve cover. Uh, I do have one bracket to install there, but the coils are not present yet, so we must uh, move forward here. And I guess we'll just go ahead and set up that front valve cover next. So, let's get all my tools off of my fender cover here. And by the way, I did rinse out those cams on that back cover before putting everything back together. I've already cleaned off the gasket surface on this head right here. I need to rinse this front side off because you see it's got, uh, it's got little hairs on it, little fibers from the cover. It is what it is. Here, coming in with some oil. We'll just pour some uh, some new motor oil on top of our cams here. That's just going to rinse off any debris off those friction surfaces so they don't become damaged. And that's all going to get washed down into the crankcase. And then I think the majority of it's going to end up getting uh, dumped out when I pull the drain plug. And anything left, again, will remain in the oil filter. There we go. Yeah, a little bit on the chains, why not? 
Yeah. All right, so we've got our two little blue gaskets here. Let's get those guys in place. You guys stay. And now let's go ahead and get this remaining cover regasketed and uh, we'll get this thing bolted down next. So similar procedure as before, bend the tabs out, pull the, uh, the seals out, push the new seals in, and then uh, perimeter gasket and we're good to go. Bending action here. Flexing. Yeah, we're still flexing, we're not bending. Flexing action. Lots of flexing. Good, 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 good. Okay, let's give this a flip. Let's see if I can't push these out by hand. Uh, maybe? No, oh, nope. Need hammer. Pry driver hammer. Come out. Please. That one was a little stuck. It was more stucker. -er. That one's good. Flip it again. Holes are nice and clean. Let's get our new ones pressed down into their pore. You couldn't see because my big hand was in the way. Sorry. I am terrible cameraman. What it was, I was looking at my work and not looking at uh, what you guys are looking at. It's hard, sometimes you gotta do both at the same time. Okay, that one's in. That's all three. Pliers, pliers, pliers. Bend these little tabs back. But I could break them off, but... Nah. Go. Let's make it nice and even and flush looking. Very good. Okay, perimeter gaskets next. Let's go ahead and find that 90. And I believe there's one 90 here and the rest of them are not 90, so this is self-explanatory. There we go. Very good. Slide that thing in its little groove. Stay in your groove. Yeah, they like to come out as you move along. It's good. Set it down. Recheck, and that is good to go. Let's put some sealant uh, on that cylinder head over there, and we'll get this thing installed. Ooh, fatal error, but I neglected. Don't want to double gas at that. That would not be okay. All right, a little bit of sealant right there. Kind of a lot of bit, but it'll be okay. And a lot of bit of sealant right there. There we go. Good, 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 good. All right, cylinder head slash valve cover. Let's get you maneuvered into your home. Minding the wiring harness that I'm about to get stuck. Don't want to do that. And I'm navigating around that uh, oil supply line again. Kind of a tight squeeze. Slide this over those spark plug tube seals. This is good. Those have seated quite nicely. I think we're there. How's that pal looking over here? Not exactly seated just yet. A little bit of hammer action. And just like the back side, we'll just give this a couple taps. It's gonna seat that dowel pin. That's good. Very, very good. And then there's one more. There's another pin right up here on this one. There. Boom the bar. 
Okay, let's get all of our bolts started. And again, we'll go ahead and walk around, get all the fasteners in. We'll bring them to torque. We're gonna do that in super high speed lightning fast motion because it's just a bunch of nuts and bolts. Okay, bolts are in. Let's get them seated a little bit. Some light duty impact. One down here. Hey, give that back. My socket. So those are all tight, indicating that the dowel is in fact seated, or actually rather the uh, cylinder head cover is seated onto the dowel. Semantics and things of that nature. Anyway, let's uh, let's get the fuel injector connectors reconnected. There's just gonna be three of those guys. Still no coils. All right, get on there, connector. There you go. Now you can't really get these things backwards. They don't have enough wire to uh, let you connect the injector to the wrong connector. Uh, this one doesn't want to go in. It's my fault. I'm not aligning it properly. Okay, let's put that harness on the bracket. This harness on its bracket. Got a VVT solenoid to connect. Position sensor right here to connect. One more bracket over here to connect, and then we've got our banjo over there. Can't forget the banjo bolt. Okay, let's move over here so we can get a, a better view on that. Okay, here's our fitting with the screen. One crush washer. Let's pull this thing back some. Get the uh, second crush washer. And there we go. Let's get this guy tight. Begin threading now. Come on. Please. There. Yeah, that's better. Okay, going in again with the ratcheting spline wrench. Let's get this thing tightened down. And then uh, I'll find something else to move on to. I'm starting to get to a point where I'm at a standstill without those coils which displeases me. I guess I can do the front coils because those ones are going to stay. We can keep those. It's the ones in the rear that we're, uh, we wanted to change. Okay, it's getting tight. A little tighter. And... Slip clickage. There we go. Okay, I see a connector. That's a straggler. And uh, let's see. Next, uh, well, coils. That's all we got. Oh, there's another connector. Straggler. Ooh, ground wire. Missing ground wire right there. I found you. No matter. I will connect to you. Did it go here or here? I think it went here. It does now. Or no, 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 no. I'm very wrong. It goes here. There's already a bolt there. Error. Error in judgment. Okay. All right, so since we're running out of stuff to do, let's get some dielectric in, uh, in these coil boots here. And we'll get the front bank of coils on. Slide these dudes in right here. Another. And we can get these connected as well. That one. Uh, where's that other wire? There it is. That one. Then we've got three more 10 mil bolts that hold it down. Those are still hanging out up on the dash. Wiper cowl. Wiper dash. Up there. You know what I meant. these things. Fix. 
All right, good to go. Oh, I forgot. I forgot two of the 12 mil fasteners. Front row. Can't forget those. That would not be okay. Actually, there's three, I think, yeah. And one more way over here in the corner. There it is. Yoda fall. One harness bracket right there. Dude. All right, folks, here's the dealio. It is 4.50 p.m. in the afternoon, and I still do not have any coils. So uh, I guess what I'm gonna have to do is just save the rest of this for a part two video. Um, the coils should be here sometime in the morning, maybe late afternoon. Once those coils show up, I can drop them in on the backside. We can regasket the lower and in upper intake manifold, get that bolted on, get the PCV system, the EVAP system, the throttle body, all that good stuff reconnected. In the meantime, I guess I can go ahead and spill and fill the oil. You guys don't want to see that, so I'm going to skip that part. Uh, I do have some other knickknacky items that we're going to do on this car, but I think I can save that for the trailing end of the part two because we don't have that much engine work left over on this uh, on the top side here. So uh, tomorrow's video that's going to bring the final assembly of the engine plus some teardown and some other components and maybe a couple maintenance items. Let's see how that goes. So until then, and as always, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know the drill. Please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later in a transmission, in a day, in a Toyota, in a engine work, in a valve covers. Adios, sayonara, das vidanya, aloha, au revoir, and goodbye.